welcome to the EEPROM 9's oscilloscope tutorial on usage and oscilloscopes. This one is being done put ahead of everything else because Mr. VX recently got a dual trace scope from his place of work and doesn't know how to use it so I intend to essentially throw some basic information out there for basic use of a scope. Plus he's done a few things for me, so... It doesn't hurt to return the favour. So first off, we have, in this case, an ancient single channel scope. Dual channel scopes will have this section here twice. They have another one there, and they have all the time-based stuff next to that, and sometimes they even have double this. In fact, this will be mounted, this knob will be mounted above this knob. And what you have is they're nice and labelled on here. This one time base, this one amplitude. And they'll call it channel 1, channel 2, and you get scopes with multiple channels. You get two major breeds of scopes, analogue and digital. We're concentrating on analogue. Digital requires its own tutorial in itself, but as you can guess, it's fully computerized. But it essentially does the same thing and allows like storage options so you can capture serial pulses of like ASCII code being sent down a terminal line or something. Some analog scopes do have their own forms of storage which can be used for a similar purpose. Now first off, when it comes to scopes, we have our input and we also have trigger inputs which this can be used for things like inputting instead of the horizontal signal you can input an external signal as we shall generate so this is the horizontal so that means it will be going that way the beam so we put our function generator in and as you can see distorts made it zoom off to the left now let's see if we can get that back in any way um, yeah that won't work with it <laughs> but that zoomed off to the left and this will be your vertical now this I have no use for this I don't know what it is I don't know what this does either it just does something now a safety word to note with scopes is your centre probe is your standard positive but your negative probe which you connect to the negative of your circuit and your positive of the circuit is also connected to the house's earth wire that means that means it's connected to this pin here your earth now that is not normally a problem because it's a safety feature but it can backfire if you're not careful for example if you're measuring a battery it has no problem what way you connect it round but if you're measuring a circuit where the negative of that circuit is connected to the earth such as you're measuring the circuitry of another scope because they connect the negative to the earth there's reasons why but I do not know them do not connect the negative to a positive part of the circuit because you will short it straight through the mains earth and potentially if there's enough current there blow up your probes and scope and this is not only an expensive mistake because scopes aren't cheap uh, stand dual trays will be 50 quid a second hand and one like this was 30 quid. Not cheap. The, which can lead to the cables literally going bang and the scope going bang. So under no circumstances connect this to the positive if you've got a mains earthed device. Make sure you work out the negative and positive and connect this to the negative of the circuit and this to the positive. 
now we put it back into here we're not going to cover the function generator that's a tutorial in itself the next thing after that safety point is you've got several functions so let's take our probe out first off you have this ACDC let's knock it to oh god what the hell is going on here there we go let's knock this to a, there we go sine wave that apparently is when it looks more like trying yeah this I'm not sure if it's the scope glitching or this glitching, but this is faulty. There we go, that worked. That's better. <laughs> Whack. But this is your AC-DC. When pressed, it puts it in DC mode. So what you're seeing here is negative voltage, and here is positive voltage. Now this is set to 5 volts per division, because each 1 centimeter division will mean each one of those complies with it. So when you have it connected to this, each division is 20 volts. To 10, each division is 10 volts. 5, each division is 5 volts. The same goes for the time base. So here you have milliseconds. There's a thousand milliseconds in a second, and there's a thousand like u seconds in a millisecond. And then you can use this a bit of clever math, which you should always have calculated for, to work out the frequency. So, for example, if we do this, grab that off there, pop that in there. Now, this bit actually glitches up quite a bit. Oh, God's sake, just stay in the fucking thing. So if we knock this to 1, that will be a 1000 there, and when you've got dun 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 dun, so your edge of your sine wave starts about up here, the middle, and ends there, so if we move it into position, wrong one, uh, where's, the, where's the X knob here it is, you will notice that fits in, so that means there's a thousand milliseconds in that. Now one hertz is one second. Something happened in one second. So a thousand milliseconds. So that's a thousand of these cycles in that means one kilohertz. Now hopefully that's enough information to explain it because this is explaining maths and maths is not a strong subject of mine. But hopefully it gives you a good idea of how to do the frequency measurement. Now let's get it out of there and put it back on this over here. There we go. So we set it back to what it was. There we go. Now here you've got ACDC. Go back to this. So when we depress it then it goes to AC mode where it will essentially center the signal no matter whether it's a negative voltage or a positive voltage. Positive voltage will appear up here, if it's negative voltage will be down here. And this line is like the zero volt volts point. Useful if you've got a signal that's way off up top or way off down bottom so you can just see the signal. Let's knock it to a more stable one. There we go. Now if we knock it back, that is pretty much fluctuating in the AC square wave. The next part is your amplitude. This is like a built-in sector. They're normally 1 kilohertz and 0 0.2 volts is what you should set the amplitude to. Because that's voltage up there. So each one of them divisions would be 0 0.2 volts. And 1 millisecond kilohertz. So this adjusts the time scale, which is your x-axis, and this adjusts the y-scale, which is your y-axis. Very important, dual trace scopes, they should be both above each other or below each other. I'm not sure which way it is, I don't own a dual trace scope and I don't get to play with them much. 
The next thing that you should probably know about is this button, the positive negative, will basically invert it, the signal. So negative will appear where a positive was and posi positive will appear as a negative. Watch. So there's where a positive will appear. Ta-da! A po negative will appear down here. Ta-da! Basically invert it. Not sure the purpose of that. Trigger external will allow you to stick in its an external trigger into this port here to essentially align it externally with another function generator. The exact purpose of it, I cannot tell you because I have not used that feature. Horizontal external will do, allow you to do the same thing, will allow you to create drive the display. This, this once again is a thing I don't know. But you can link up to audio and do a U-scope demo with that. This just basically makes that bigger. I'm not sure of its purpose. Pretty pointless if you ask me. Now if we take out the scopes. Right then, back before we're rudely interrupted by the camera card running out. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you. And also if you have any questions at the end, leave a comment. And the scope or something's glitching again. Is it this? Is it this? don't know, neither one's reacting. <laughs> it's a good old engineer's way of testing things. That's a whack whack! It's a bit like the engineer off Team Fortress 2. Whack! Whack with the wrench! Anyway, uh, that, this isn't a gaming video. That can be for another one. Team Fortress 2, another video. But then, you have the adjustments. So, this is an adjustment. Where the GD, which stands for ground, you press it and it will just kill all input. This is for alignment. Now, down here you have your X position, which will move your beam from side to side, and your Y position will move it up and down. And also, if you change the time base down to really low, you get the dot going on. That should actually go across the whole screen, but it doesn't because my scope's dodgy. Now you're starting to see why I'm after a new one. I'm hoping to acquire a dual trace soon, which will be a nice improvement over this, and well, should be fully functional. But this has been an excellent starter scope, and it will go in the car as a portable one to use out and about. You've also got your brightness control, which on this scope needs to be up at full to actually use it, which is also the power in this case, and your focus. Whoa. But also focus once again on full for this. So if we knock it onto that, we can sort out the pinpoint focus of the dot and get it just so it's nice and focused. Knock on that and use your exposition to adjust it so it's exactly central on the tube and your wide position to get it exactly central in there. You also notice it's brighter at the top and bottom because there's screen burn along here. Yeah, this is a scope that's been used in a workshop extensively since it's since being brought, which is why it's in pretty bad nick. And that's another reason why scopes are more expensive. The lower price ones tend to be a bit on the dodgy side. So when you get one for free, that's always a good thing. I'm hoping to pick one up from the comms lab because the teacher's retiring and potentially a load of kit will get thrown out. So, And the comms lab teacher themselves doesn't want that, so they're giving it away, selling it and whatever else. So that allows adjustment for that. This is purely an adjustment control. This is an earth thing, links to mains earth. can be used externally to link to circuits or... Maybe you could use an anti-static wrist strap with it. Give some more demonstrations of time base. Will you look at that? Doesn't that look cool? Yeah, here when you have a signal in it. You can also see the trace returning back with a dim glow. So we knock it zero two. So this one, two millisecs. So let's find out figure out the frequency of this one. So 5 volts per division, that isn't really important. What is important? 
there's no, that's the wrong thing. I want the X position. Uh, tools two. So we want four, don't we? Yeah, I'd need a calculator for that, and I don't have one handy. <laughs> I can't work out that frequency then. Because it's four into a thousand, it doesn't work exactly. That'd be something point less than a megahertz. Be a few hundred kilohertz. But yeah, that pretty much covers it. Now, scopes come with varieties of probes. You can buy these, they're about several quid. Now this is your basic probe setup. You've, the negative lead is detachable because of dual trace scopes you can actually set them. So one can act as the negative for the X axis and the other for the positive for the Y axis and essentially use them without having to connect this allowing you to measure more dangerous circuits that are live potential. Because that's another safety thing. Never, ever, ever, under any circumstance, connect these to mains. You will blow up your scope and potentially kill yourself. If it's not isolated from mains, do not connect it. Now, these come with varieties of ends that can be seen here, and an adjustment tool. Because in there, is a little variable capacitor that allows you to adjust what that appears on there. And you also get a times 10 function on the probe, which I shall flick on this probe so you can see the effect. This will essentially times the output by 10. So if it's a 1 volt division, such as that, so that will times 5 10 times that by 10 and essentially reduce it by 10 so that's on 5 volt per division so that's 10 volts in total or something like that but yeah you get the idea it does it by 5 and I've knocked it off the bloody thing again get the hell back on there there we go yeah so the times 10 switch isn't amazingly useful but it'll, it'll have its niche applications it's not useful for general purpose scope work now I suppose I should, should go to the bit that I should have put at the beginning but that's what happens when you don't script and plan things you kind of just mix and mash so if the mix and mashing is a bit confusing do tell me and I'll try and clear things up of where you got lost basically but essentially you might be asking, what is a scope and why would you need one? A scope allows you to see the voltage. This, as well as what the signal is doing and frequencies. Digital scopes can tell you the voltage per division and frequency because they work it all out, but analog won't, unless you've got an analog hi digital hybrid, which do exist. So you get the benefits of analog, but mix of digital electronics to do just measuring. But essentially, a scope allows you to see the circuit. That is exactly what the wave is doing. It's going between negative and positive in real life. And you can essentially see what your circuit is doing, because with a multimeter, you'll just see a voltage from that. You will not see anything else. You do not know if this voltage is constant or actually oscillating. And if a voltage is constant when it should be osculating, your circuit will not work. This allows you to see that and see if it's osculating correctly. Now this is incredibly useful for circuit debugging and building as you can see what signals are doing what, the types of waves they're producing and so on and so forth. Essentially, it basically visualises electronics to you. You can see exactly what it's doing. Voltages, everything. What you can't see... 
So that's what it is and why you'd use it. They're more a tool you discover how useful they are when you own them and use them. But these are an absolutely highly valuable tool and if you're serious about electronics repair or electronics, you need one. It is as simple as that. It's one of the essential tools. And as it says, when you're in universities and educational establishments, you might even be able to get them for free. But second hand, you're looking at about 50 quid. Uh, the next tutorial, who knows what it will be on. But I believe I've covered everything on this scope. Uh, I've also mentioned the little cow thing which gives you a little sine wave. That's what you set that to and then 2 millivolts. And so on and so forth. And also with this we can play with the frequencies and whatnot. And change things around we can make a one hertz signal one kilohertz signal whatever let's make a one hertz da, 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 da. let's go to yes There we go. There we go. We've just made a one kilohertz signal. When you've got to just do times by ten, it's easy. So, I hope that was interesting, and I hope that cleared up a few unknowns about scopes. A very useful tool. If you're serious about it, get one. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, or any else 